Cammy Back, C A M M Y B A C K. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Miss, um, uh, do you work at a retail store that sells firearms? I do. Okay, and where is that located? In Oxford, Michigan. Okay. And is that store federally licensed? Yes, it is. So it would be referred to as an FFL or Federally Firearms Licensed Dealer? Yes. Okay. And how long have you worked there? Uh, approximately four years. What is your um, your duties there? What are your duties there? Um, at this time, I am the office manager. Okay. So with the office manager, are you familiar with the process to sell uh, from an FFL a firearm to a customer? Yes. Okay. Could you walk us through the process, please? Um, so... <clears throat> When a customer comes in to purchase a firearm, um, they have to provide us with a driver's license. Why do you ask for a driver's license? For picture ID. Okay. To go on record. Can you check age as well? Yes. Okay. And what um, age are you looking for? Uh, 21 and over. Okay. Um, once I take that, um, I give the customer the um, 4473, which is the application. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for the firearm. Um, once that is filled out with their answers, I do the next check, which is the background. Um, and once I do that, it'll come back whether it's proceed, delayed, or denied. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, if someone were to walk into the store and say, I want to purchase this firearm, you would ask for picture ID, and then that person would fill out the application for the firearms? Yes. And that's what you refer to as the 4473? Yes. Okay. And is that also referred to as a firearms transaction record? Yes. Okay. And then that person goes through, you take that information, then what do you do with it? I put all their information into the computer, into the NIC system. Okay. And that's for background purposes? Yes, sir. Okay. And then it, it tells you either yes or no to proceed? Yes. Okay. Um, and then... The 4473, that's provided through the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Yes. Okay. There's also a trigger lock statement that's provided as well? Yes. And that's through Michigan State Police? Yes. And tell me what that is, please. Um, so once the, um, it's just a form stating, showing the customer that there is a trigger lock provided with the firearm that they are um, going to purchase. So they have to date and sign it, okay. as long as we have to do it as well. Okay. And if that form has been date, dated and signed and there's an indication that a, uh, some kind of lock is provided, that means a lock was in fact provided for the purchase? Yes. Does your store also provide purchases purchase of handguns with a copy of the ATF Youth Handgun Safety Notice Act? Yes. Okay. And what is that? Um, it just... The Youth Act is, just gives the information of the do's and the don'ts with the firearm around um, <clears throat> minors. Okay. And they, there's information posted around your store, too, is that right? I'm sorry? There's information about that posted around your store as well? Yes, it is. And now, is this process that you described, is this the same process for every handgun sale in your store? Yes. <clears throat> Have you sold a firearm to James Crumley? Yes. Okay. Is he in court today? Yes, he is. Can you point him? Please describe something he's wearing. Uh, to my right, uh, blue shirt. Will the record reflect the identification of the defendant, Judge? The record will reflect the identification of the defendant, James Crumley. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Back, when a firearm is sold from your store, are receipts kept? Yes. Okay. And from your position as office manager, are you able to tell us if James Crumley purchased firearms on... Or strike that. As an office manager, are you able to tell us every time that James Crumley purchased a firearm from your store? Yes. Okay. I'd like to first direct your attention to June of 2021. Um, Miss, you've seen receipts, pistol sales records, trigger lock statements, firearms transaction records of um, firearm sales from your store to James Crumley. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to... These have been admitted. It's exhibits 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 for the record. Okay. And Ms. Beck, we'll go through those one by one. Sure. Okay. We'll 
we're going to start. Can you see this, People's Exhibit 29? Yes. Okay. So what are we looking at right here? That is a sales receipt. Okay, and this is a receipt from the store that you work at as an office manager? Yes. Okay. And what does it indicate as far as what was sold? Um, a Cobra Elite Classic. And what's the price for that? Um, $169.95. Okay, so $169.95? Yes. And it indicates uh, 22 LR. What's that? Uh, the um, ammo. Okay. So it's a 22 caliber yeah. gun? Yes. And this is a two shot pistol, is that right? Yes. Okay, so this, what's the date of this receipt? Uh, June 15th of 21. And we have at the top here, underneath the date, name James Robert Crumbly? Yes. Okay. So that indicates that James Robert Crumbly was in your store and paid $180.15, that's the price of tax, for that handgun? Yes. Okay. This is Exhibit 30. What do we see here? This is a pistol rec uh, sales record. Okay. And tell us, please, again, what is a pistol sales record? Um, this, this is a record that um, you are given when you buy a pistol, um, that you, he takes his copy that has to be dropped within 10 days of the purchase, and we keep a copy. What do you mean dropped? Um, at their local sheriff's department, police department, whatever <coughs> county they are, okay. they, they live in. Okay, so this has uh, James Robert Crumley's name on it. Um, it has the serial number of the firearm, and as you said, Cobra, classic 22 caliber. Um, it has the two the shot, it says two, so that indicates two shot? Yes. Okay. And it has the barrel length on there as well? Yes. Um, but it says purchase transfer date June 16, 21. What is that? So, <clears throat> when Mr. Crumbly came in to purchase this firearm, he um, possibly got a delay, it seems, um, and he had to pick up the firearm prior to him getting a proceed, which I'm assuming was the next day. Okay. When you say delay, what does that mean? Um, that his background check is still under review. Okay. And that can happen from time to time? Yes. Okay. So he paid for the gun on the 15th, but picked up the gun on the 16th? Yes. Right. This is People's Exhibit 33. This is what? This is a sales receipt? Yes. Okay. And what's the date of this? Uh, June 16th, 21. Okay, and again, the name James Robert Crumbly? Yes. Okay, um, but what's this receipt for? Um, it's the purchase of another firearm. Okay, and that says Caltech P1722 LR? Yes. And the amount for that is $299.95? Yes. Okay, and then what else did he buy with that? He bought two boxes of ammo. Okay, and what was the price for each box of ammo? Uh, $14.95. And so he spent a grand total of $349.64 on June 16th? Yes. All right. So if he, he picked up the Classic on June 16th, and while he was in the store, or at some point that day, he also paid for this Caltech? Yes. This is Exhibit 34, another pistol sales record. What is this of? Um, this is the pistol sales record for the Caltech P17. Um, again... The purchase date here is 6 21 Okay, so what would that indicate to you then if he paid for it on the 16th but he received possession of it on the 17th? Um, that he is either delayed or his research was taking too long, so he chose to leave our store and come back at a later date or time that day mm -hmm. to pick his gun up. Okay, so then you actually picked it up on the 17th then? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going I'm to direct your attention now to November the 26th of 2021. On that day, do you recall selling a firearm to the defendant, Mr. Crumbly? Yes. Okay. This is Exhibit 37 here. What is this? That is the 6 hour SP 2022. Okay. And sales receipt. This is dated November 26, 2021? Yes. Okay. And how much did the six hour cost? Four eighty nine ninety five. Okay, so with tax he paid a total of five hundred and nineteen dollars and thirty five cents? Yes. All right. And what is the date of when he walked out of the store with that gun? 
11, 26, 21. Okay, so on that day, he paid for it and walked out of the same day. Yes. Now, on these pistol sales records, we also have an, uh, a box here that indicates serial number. Yes. Okay. To your knowledge, does every firearm have a unique serial number? Yes, they do. Was the defendant with anyone when he made this purchase of the 6 hour 9 millimeter? Yes. And tell me about that, please. Um, Mr. Crumbly had another gentleman with him, a younger guy. Um, and when I came out of the office, him and the gentleman, he was standing at the counter, the showcase. When we say gentleman, did you come to learn who that person was? Yes, his son. Okay. Um, he was standing at the showcase and the, his son was standing behind him. Okay. Um, I approached um, a customer prior to Mr. Crumbly and he directed me to go ahead and take care of Mr. Crumbly first. So I did. Mr. Crumbly asked to see the um, Six Hour, said he had had his eye on that for quite some time. And just because he is a familiar face to our store, I looked at him and said, you know the drill, I need your license. Um, took that, made copies uh, while he was filling out his um, application. Okay. And um, once that was done, um, I ran him and through the NICS system for his background check. Um, and once I finished that up, I told Mr. Crumbly, um, he was in research, um, that Chris, which is another employer, would be taking his cell over. Um, Mr. Crumbly stated, I know it usually takes a while for my research. Okay. And him and his son walked away, went over to the holster wall. Um, I don't recall any interaction with them once they walked away from the counter. Okay. So before you helped them, before the defendant pointed to the 9mm SIG, did he shop around at all, or did he just point to that gun? Uh, as I came out of the office, they were right at the showcase with that gun. Okay. That was the only one he picked out. Now, for this gun, the SIG Sour, did he pay uh, with cash or credit card? Um, I did not uh, finish the transaction, but through what I saw, observed from the office side of it. Sure, it's your role as an office manager, Could you, were you able to tell us? Yes, it okay. was cash. Okay, and how were you able to make that determination? Uh, through receipts. Okay. I'm going to show you Exhibit 39. This is um, a portion of a firearms transaction record. It's zoomed in so you can see it. May I approach the witness? Sure. Ms. Beck, this is the, I'm going to show this to you, this is a three-page document. What have I just handed you? Uh, the application. Okay, that's the 4473? Yes. Okay. So we seem to be referring to the same thing as either a 4473, a firearms transaction record, or an application, is that right? Yes. Okay. So, um, what we're looking at on the screen here, is that a zoomed-in portion of that application? Yes. Now, part of this application indicates a number of questions that the applicant has to answer yes or no. Would that be right? Correct. Okay, so if you can see on the screen, under box 21, there's questions A, B, C, D, and E. Yes. Tell us what these are. So these, um, so A is asking, are you going to be the one to leave with the gun? Yes, and then the other ones are your felony, military, um, you know, any drug, depressant, um, questions of that kind of sort. Okay, so A says, are you the actual transferee slash buyer of the firearm listed on this form? And any continuation sheet, ATF form 5300.9A, and then it has a bolded warning, what does that say? Uh, you are not the actual, you are not the actual transferee buyer if you are requiring a firearm on behalf of another person. If you are not the actual transferee buyer of the license, cannot transfer the firearm to you. And he checked yes, that it was for him? Yes. All right. Um, B is, are you under indictment for, for any felony? 
to check no to that. Right. C, have you been convicted in any court, including military court of a felony? Check no for that. D, are you fugitive? He also checked no for that. Correct. E, are you an awful, unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any other depressant, depressant stimulant, narcotic drug, or controlled substance? With a warning, the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law guidelines regardless whether it's been legalized or decriminalized mm -hmm. for medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. You check note of that. Correct. Okay. And this is the same form that was, so, was filled out by James Crumbly every time he made a purchase from the store? Yes. And he answered the questions in the same way? Yes. Now, you don't do any research as a office manager of a federal firearms licensed dealer to investigate if what he said in these these questions are true or false. Is that right? No. <clears throat> oh, here's the, the front of the, the form here. This is the same exhibit, Exhibit 39? Yes. Okay. Now, did the six hour the six hour come in a uh, plastic case? Yes, it did. Now, this case itself does not have a locking mechanism. Is that correct? The case, no. Okay. And are you able to identify if this was in fact the case sold to James Crumley with that six hour? Yes. Can I approach? Sure. This is Exhibit 41. It has been stipulated too. So what are we looking at on the side of this case here? Um, you're looking at, are we talking the bold, the black? Right here. S -N, what does SN mean? So that's the serial number. Okay. Which is written in box three on the application. Okay. But I can also identify it as to the stock number that I put on each box when a firearm comes in. So 21-10620 matches up to the box. Okay, so you can be sure that this is in fact the, the case that the gun was holding. Yes. Okay. So you mentioned that this case itself doesn't have its own locking mechanism. No. When you sold the gun to James Crumley on November the 26th, did he fill out the trigger lock statement? He did. And did you as well? I did. Okay. And in that trigger lock statement, did you indicate that a lock had been provided to yes. Mr. Crumbly? Yes. So first, I'm going to open this up because I have gloves on. Sure. Let's show the jury. And this case is provided, it has an insignia SIG on it. Yes. So this is provided by SIG Sauer, the manufacturer of the gun? Yes. Okay. What kind of lock was provided to Mr. Crumbly on November the 26th? Uh, cable lock. Okay. And was that cable lock, in fact, provided to your store from Six Hour? Yes. So this is Exhibit 40. This is the trigger lock statement from November the 26th, 2021. And this indicates that you did, in fact, provide him with that? Yes. Okay. And it says, or a gun case or storage container that can be secured to prevent unauthorized access. So this doesn't have a locking mechanism on it, correct? It does not. Okay. So I want to show you now Exhibit 97. <clears throat> Exhibit 97, specifically the on the right part of the screen here. What do we see here? Um, we see the... Child handguard safety, we need the cable lock and the two clips. And when you say the cable lock, was this was this cable lock and that pamphlet provided with James Crumley when he bought the bought the six hour on November the twenty sixth? Yes. Okay. One moment, Your Honor.
don't know if I asked this or not, but this is the type of lock that was provided by Sig Sauer at the time this firearm was sold? Yes. Okay, thank you. No, Ross? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Beck. Hi. We know that you were working on November 26th of 2021. Yes. You were involved in the sale of the Sig Sauer 9mm to James Crumbly. Yes. In fact, you just testified about the beginning of that sale, correct? Yes. That you came out of the office? Yes. That you approached a different customer? Yes. Then you approached Mr. Crumbly? Yes. Who was standing at the counter? Yes. You testified that Mr. Crumbly knew which firearm he wanted. Yes. You recall that you had some conversation with Mr. Crumbly? I did not have a conversation with him. Standing at the counter? I approached him and asked if he needed help. And did you converse with him? Did you talk with him at all? No, I did not. You asked Mr. Crumbly which firearm he wanted to purchase? Or I if he asked, wanted to see anything? I asked if he need help and he said, yes, I want to see that. And he indicated that, um, or I'm sorry, you indicated that you recognized Mr. Crumbly from prior purchases, correct? Yes. Um, so you knew he'd been to the store before? Right. He knew which handgun he wanted and he indicated to you that it was based on prior visits, if you recall. No. He said he had his eye on that gun for a while, so that means he could have been in the shop looking at it, could have been online looking at it. I don't know. I didn't inquire that. You testified previously in this case? Yes. Specifically, you testified on February 24th of 2022? Yes. Do you recall your testimony on that day? Yes. Would it help to refresh your recollection to know exactly what you testified on that day as it relates to this question? Sure. May I approach, Your Honor? Thank you. You can review the highlighted lines. You can look before and after if you'd like as well. And just look up when you're done reviewing it, please. Is this what I'm saying? Correct. So this is saying what I just said. May I approach? Sure. Thank you. My question was, you do recall, however, that he was very clear that he wanted one handgun based on his prior visits to the store. Your answer was yes. Yes. Well, hold on a second, Judge. Counsel didn't read the question before that. Okay, well, I guess you can follow up. I'll do a redirect. That's fine. There was also some discussion, if you recall, you testified that uh, Mr. Crumbly said, you testified on February 24th of 2022, that Mr. Crumbly said he had his eye on that firearm for a few days, if you recall. He didn't say a few days, he said quite some time. Your testimony was that he had, that he said that he had his eye on it for a few days, if you recall that testimony. Which sure. page, Counselor? Yes, page 88. Thank you. Um, specifically lines three through four. Thank you. He purchased the handgun that he pointed at and looked at, correct? The yes. six hour? Yes. You had no reason to believe that Mr. Crumbly was buying the firearm for anybody else? No. In fact, you said that the younger, you called him the younger guy who was there was standing behind him. Yes. Behind Mr. Crumbly, I'm sorry. Yes. You didn't see Mr. Crumbly having any conversations with that younger guy prior to uh, approaching them at the counter, correct? No. At some point, you handed the sale off to, I think you said Chris? Yes. If you recall, you didn't see any conversations between Mr. Crumbly and that younger guy about the purchase of that firearm after you handed off the sale, correct? I did not. You didn't hear um, Mr. Crumbly say anything to the indiv individual that he was standing with about buying the handgun for him? No. And we identified, you later learned that the individual with him was his son? Yes. You didn't hear or see the, his son say anything to Mr. Crumbly about, that's the one I want? No. In fact, you saw no exchange between them whatsoever? None. You testified that provided with the sale of firearms at your store is also an ATF handgun notice, correct? Yes. And in that ATF handgun notice, 
Are you familiar with that with that pamphlet, the safety notice? Yes. We can see it in the picture, correct? Yes. You've reviewed that previously? Not yes. necessarily in connection yes. with this case, but as yes. part of your employment. Yes. And in general, it's it's unlawful for a minor to possess a firearm. Is that correct? Yes. There are certain circumstances where it is not unlawful, correct? Correct. And specifically, 18 U.S.C. 922X, sub 3, sub A, sub I, which is in that pamphlet, says that a minor can temporarily possess a handgun under certain conditions. Do you Judge, know that? I'm just going to object to the form of the question to this witness. We do have a special agent from the ATF testifying later in this trial. I don't think this witness is equipped to testify to the, the content of the pamphlet, only that it was actually given. Well, the, the pamphlet is an, is an evidence. It, right? it will be. It's not yet, but it will be. Okay. So, well, I mean, I get you, she... Have you seen that excerpt in that pamphlet? That, you know, I mean, said, not all the numbers. I mean, I couldn't recall all the... I mean, asking Ms. Back to recall the specific site from the <laughs> United States Code is, is a little bit <laughs> difficult for her. I'll ask her for the content then, Your Honor. Yeah. I was trying to be complete in my question, but I'll, I'll just ask her if she recalls the content. You know that that pamphlet directs that if a minor can temporarily possess a handgun under certain conditions, correct? Are you familiar with that part of the pamphlet? She's Sorry, read that? Yes that a minor can temporarily possess a handgun under certain conditions. Yes. Included in that is target practice, correct? Yes. To your knowledge, and this is just your knowledge, I'm not asking you about anything that you may know about anything after they left the store, but while they were in the store, to your knowledge, you never saw Mr. Crumbly allow, to, allow his son to possess that Sig Sauer without his permission? No. Or his supervision? No. Based on your knowledge of the law, and this is just your knowledge of the law, it is not illegal for Mr. Crumbly to allow his son to use that Sig Sauer or any handgun at a, at a shooting range? No. Um, or for Mr. Crumbly's son to handle the firearm while at home if Mr. Crumbly is supervising him? That's a object to the form of the question. It's, she's talking about, that's two different things. Yeah, so, well, you, you can't ask her if it's legal or, or illegal, but you can ask her if she's familiar with what is in the pamphlet. If that's in the pamphlet, she's familiar with it, she can testify. Correct, Your Honor. That, that was a continued question of based on your knowledge of the law. I'm asking her about her knowledge. Okay, now I'm going to object to the relevance, Judge. She's an office manager for the store that sold the firearm. Asking her what her knowledge of the law is is, is not appropriate, Judge. It's an improper question. Well, yeah, what is, why does her knowledge of that law, why, why is that relevant? Your Honor, I would think that as somebody who's an office manager of a firearm store that she would have knowledge of firearms laws. Okay, but, but she might, but she might, but why is it relevant to these proceedings? I think you have an ATF guy, right? I can ask him as well, Judge. Okay. Yeah, her, her, knowledge, it, her knowledge of the pamphlet, because she reviewed it and did to Mr. Crumley, um, would be relevant, but I don't think her knowledge of the law is relevant to these proceedings. Thank you, Judge. Regarding the trigger lock statement, that was, which exhibit was that? You had a few of them, but we'll look at exhibit 40. Exhibit 40 is the trigger lock statement. This was the one specifically from November 26th of 2021, correct? Yes. The trigger lock statement simply in, in bold, right above purchaser dealer, in bold, that statement indicates that signing of that form just shows that that sale was done in compliance with the law, correct? Yes that a cable lock or a locking box or a storage box was provided, correct? Yes. There's nothing on there that's an acknowledgement that, that the purchaser is going to use the cable lock, correct? Correct. There's nothing directing that the purchaser has to use the cable lock, is that correct? Correct. There's nothing on that form indicating that you are required to do anything as the dealer other than provide the cable lock, the trigger lock, or the case, correct? Correct. In fact, in November of 2021, there were no laws governing whether somebody had to use a cable lock or a case or a, a safe or anything like that, if you know. Judge, relevance. There's no relevance to this proceeding. Response? If she knows, Your Honor. But it's, not, it's not just personal knowledge, it's relevance. Are you asking her if she knew of any law? Correct, Your Honor. I, I do know. It, I were you familiar with anything like that? No, ma'am. It is a no. Thank you. Exhibit 36, which is the firearm transaction record 
I believe this was scored at Caltech. You indicated on direct examination that um, Mr. Crumbly did not receive the firearm the same day that he purchased the firearm, the Caltech. Correct. And this is the firearm transaction record. This is page two of that form, correct? Yes. And you indicated on direct that you didn't know if it was delayed or if there was some other reason. It could have just been taking a long time with the federal government. Is that accurate? Yes. Now, if the, if the sale was delayed, there would be a box checked on this page two, correct? Yes. In fact, it would be toward here, toward the bottom, where in uh, 27C, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And this says proceed. Yes. So that sale was not delayed by the federal government other than maybe it was just taking a long time. Is that fair? Yes. I want to go back to the purchase of the Sig Sauer 9mm. Exhibit 37 is the receipt. And I will put it up on the screen for you. This is the receipt of the Sig Sauer purchase on November 26th of 2021, correct? Yes. And on there, we see that the firearm is listed. It says 1 Sig Sauer SP2 2022. Yes. There's a serial number, SN slash, and then it has numbers and letters. Yes. Has a price. Yes. Mr. Crumbly's contact information. Yes. His driver's license. Yes. Um, shows it was paid, correct? Yes. Mr. Crumbly's signature. Yes. The stock number. Yes. The tax amount. Yes. There's no ammunition listed, correct? I'm sorry? There's no ammunition listed, correct? Correct. To your knowledge, James Crumbly did not purchase ammunition with the Sig Sauer on November 26th of 2021, correct. correct? If he had, he would have had a receipt for it at your store, correct? Yes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Uh, briefly, thank you. Ms. Back, if the defendant's son would have walked in with the defendant and pointed at that 9mm and said, Hey, Dad, that's the one I want. Would you have sold it to him? No. Okay. And in fact, in your store, there's information posted that says, don't buy for somebody else. Correct. Okay. Um, now, that uh, the trigger lock statement, that is to ensure that the firearm dealer provides the tool to make it safe to the buyer of the gun. Is that right? Yes. Whose responsibility it is to actually make the gun safe? The buyer. Thank you. Nothing further. All right, I'm going to allow you to step down and be excused. Thank you.